Hello, welcome to a Paper Flourish craft video. My name is Julie. Today I'm going to make an Alice Forever altered hoop uh, project. So this is a six inch wooden hoop. We do have some of these coming in store. They're not there yet, but they are not far away. Um, so please keep an eye out for those. This comes apart. You undo this, comes apart into two pieces. So they end up, you've got your inside section, your outside section. First thing I did was a piece of box board. Now we have this in store for sale. It's not online. However, this can be purchased over the phone. It's a good strong chipboard. I placed the inside of the circle of the hoop and I traced around the outside of that, cut it out, and that'll be the back of the project. So this is what I ended up with. And then I've gone ahead and I have used Stamperia Primer and I've prepared both sections of the hoop. So I've completely painted that with the primer and the front and back of the box board circle. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the embroidery hoop. Now I've got two colors here, which are going to go quite nicely, I think with the, um, with the fabric I've chosen to use in the hoop. And I've got Indian turquoise and I've got cookie. I'm going to paint the outside of the hoop all completely over it with the cookie and I'm going to paint the inside with Indian turquoise. I've painted the hoop so outside with the cookie, inside turquoise, um, Indian turquoise and I've also painted the chipboard circle. Uh, I've done the Indian turquoise on one side that will actually sit underneath the fabric I'm going to use and this will be the back of the hoop with the cookie. So I'll place that circle to the side. Now I've chosen a piece of the Alice Forever, the fabric, collect from the fabric collection. This is it here, you get four different pieces of fabric in the pack, beautiful fabrics to work with. And I'm going to use the section from this bottom corner. To start with, I'm going to place the inside of the embroidery hoop down. I'm going to place this fabric over the top. Now I want to leave enough fabric over the side to get it caught in between um, the in between the sides of the hoop, the, the two embroidery hoops. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I can check this before I tighten up the hoop. Now I'm going to place this over the top and I'm going to put the the section here, the gold uh, metal section at the top, and I can use that later on. I can tie some ribbon to that to be able to display the hoop if I wanted to. Uh, be, be careful too as you're working with the hoop and drying with the heat tool, this metal section gets really hot really fast. So please be aware of that. Um, always be careful that you don't then pick it up straight away with that metal section and burn your fingers. So I'm going to try and place this right at the with the metal at the top. Placing the fabric between that. Before I tighten it, I'm going to have a look at the other side. The middle section's at the top. That looks pretty good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is tighten that up and then I'm going to trim away the fabric from the front. But so the fabric is caught between the two um, pieces of the hoop. If you find the fabric's not quite firm enough, what you can do is before you cut it, you can actually... Just pull that fabric out a little bit tighter. It'll still just be able to move enough for you to be able to do that. So you want to make sure there's no wrinkles and you want a nice firm base there. So I've got the piece at the top. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead now and trim that fabric away from here. That's all trimmed away. It is a little bit rough around here. It doesn't matter, that's got to be covered later on. So the main thing is to trim off the excess of fabric there. I'm going to attach the uh, box board circle to the back of the hoop. So this becomes the back and it should go just onto that outside hoop area. Stamperia Craft Glue. I'm going to place this all over the back and then I'm going to smooth it out with my finger and stick this onto the back of the embroidery hoop. Here we are, that's all smoothed out over the back. So now I'm going to turn this over, position it on the back and it sticks to the embroidery hoop but also to the fabric. That's all stuck down now. So. I'm, next thing I'm going to do is mixed media glue. This is the Stamperia product. I'm going to do three coats of mixed media glue 
to not only the fabric, but I'm going to go the sides of the hoop and also on the top of the hoop. And I'm gonna do three coats, so I'm gonna dry in between each. So this is now completely dry with those three coats of mixed media glue. The inside of the hoop, if it's got a bit of glue on it, uh, don't panic. In a moment, I'm going to um, I'm going to just repaint the inside of that with the Indian turquoise paint. First, though, I just wanted to show you because we're going to start to add a decoration now to go on the top, and it'll cover that rough edge of the fabric. Stampria cream paste. This is a texture mold, and this is the Our Way te texture mold. So I'll put all the details of all the products in the description of the video. Now, if you haven't seen yet, there are videos, and also on our Instagram, there are reels where I show you how to make these uh, the cream paste in the mold, how to do it, explain it. It's also on YouTube. The Magic Journal. Um, magic forest journal cover that i did the video starts with me making um, a texture mold with the cream paste so please check those out if you're not sure um, how to go about that the finished product now this is only a small section of it ends up looking like this so once it comes out of the mold completely dry it takes a couple of days in the mold to dry but it comes out it's flexible you can color it you can cut it you can do anything at all to it so I said, this is only a section of it. It started off that big. I've just used the rest of it. So what I've done is I have cut strips. This is now a little bit messy. It's got some product on it, which are the same width of the hoop. Now I measured it and this was three eighths of an inch wide. So that's how wide I've done the strips. And here are the three here. Why they're black is because I have painted them completely, sides, back and front, with black matte, black and matte super base, Stamperia. Product, piece of paper. Next thing I'm going to do is paint these with, and I think I'm going to do it with, I love the finish of these vintage patinas, so I think I'm going to paint it with the turquoise. One, so I'll just place that a little bit. I've got a paint palette to the side here, one of the Montmart ones, which to place the fab, um, all of the products onto that I'm working from. And I pick up a brush. Here we go. And I'm just going to paint this onto each of the pieces. If there's a little bit of the dark showing through, it doesn't matter. They're now painted with the turquoise vintage patina. I love the effect of this product. It looks aged, sort of a little bit chalky, and I suppose that's why they call it vintage patina. I'll just pop those to the side. At this point, I'm going to just touch up, repaint the inside of the hoop with the Stamperia Indian turquoise paint. That's all tidied up now. The inside looks nice and neat. Now I'm going to attach these strips around the top of the hoop. And you, this is flexible enough that you can bend it as you attach it. The best way to do this is with a hot glue gun. So this is the quick, just a little bit at a time. Pop some glue onto the hoop. So just do section at a time because this does cool off pretty quick this glue and then I'm just going to start at the top and you start to attach it all the way around once you've once one strip you get to the end of it just have the next one butting up against it that's all stuck down now uh, very quick to do with your hot um, glue gun so if you love your mixed media that is definitely a great purchase to make uh, very quick sticks down and dries really fast doesn't that look interesting? Now, I know it's looking very blue at the moment. Don't worry, that will change. A little bit messy at the top where I joined it. Something will be over that shortly, so you won't even see that. Doesn't matter. Crackle Paste Gold, Stamperia. I'm going to put some of this. Where's my palette knife? This is my metal spatula. I'm going to just pick up a little bit and I'm going to go around the sides on the cookie paint and just roughly pop some crackle paste all the way around and then dry that. 
crackle paste is now there it's all dried as i put it on i didn't go too thick but i roughed it up as i went and as that dries even more we'll end up getting even more crackles through that but it gives it that pretty cool rough edge to it all right now one thing i wanted to mention when i was talking about cutting the texture paste i can't remember if i told you how i cut it I just did it with my guillotine. Your guillotine will slice through this beautifully. So that's how I did my strips um, to put on the front. Just with my guillotine. It's time to add some feature, some um, highlights to this outside texture paste. I've actually grabbed some of the Prima waxes. Not sure which one I'll use, but I'm thinking I might try the white gold first. See how that looks. I'm just putting some on my hand. And I'm just going to go round. Yeah, that looks actually quite nice on the turquoise there. On the remember we had the turquoise vintage patina. So that white gold wax doesn't it look beautiful? Picking up um, the texture on the on that on those strips of the mold. And now we're going to really bring it to life. I've got Stampria beeswax. And I have the, this is a Stardust Metallic Pigment Stamperia product, and this is Golden Sun. Little pots of pure magic. I'm going to pick up just some of the wax, pop it down there, pick just a little bit up on my finger, I don't need too much. Pop the powder on and have a look at this. Oh my goodness, look. How stunning is that? So I'm going to go around the whole top and I'm also going to add some onto the crackle paste on the side just to make that sparkle a little bit more. How lovely does that look? That golden sun stardust powder, the pigment, has just absolutely brought that to life. And said so I've put it across on the crackle paste as well. All right, I've been having a bit of a play with how I'm going to finish off this uh, project. So I've got some of the die cuts. This is the Alice Forever die cuts. I've also got some of the rub on transfers. I think I'm going to use some of this set here. And these two molds I have come from actually one of the vintage library sets. It's this mold here. I've made them with the Stamperia soft clay. Now there is an Instagram reel up. I only put it up this week that shows how to make these molds, but you press the clay into the mold. You can pop it out straight away and then it needs to air dry for 24 hours, which is what these have done. So in a moment, I'm going to decorate those. Let's have a look at the die cuts. So this is one of the Stamperia blending sponges. And I'm going to ink the edges of all of the die cuts with the black archival ink, just like this. I'm just going to go around the edges. Just makes them stand out a little bit more on the project. From this lovely rub-on transfer set from the Alice, Alice in Wonderland collection, I've taken out the key. There's these little area here, the words with the butterfly and also some Roman numerals. I've just placed the die cuts back into position just so I have an idea where I'm going to place these items. So I think I might pop the key just over here to the side. I'm going to rub that on. All right, the rub on transfers are on. I end up with a little butterfly here, the Roman numerals down here and the key on the side. I have put mounting tape under the die cuts which are going to go onto the inside of the hoop. Straighten that up. Alice goes on first. Cheshire Cat, let's bring that in over on the side. I'm just going to place these back on. Just to get the placement, I'm going to make sure the Cheshire Cat's not hidden there. And of course the White Rabbit. All right, I've gone ahead and placed the die cuts onto the frame using my hot glue gun. So these were attached with mounting tape. The Underneath there is a clock. There was three pieces there. I found it easiest to stick them together across the back and then stick it down as one piece. Wonderland sign on top and then the little key and the heart. So all been attached with the hot glue gun, as has the teacup, 
the teapot and the drink me. The Stamperia paper clay moulds that I prepared from the Vintage Library mould, uh, I have sealed them with Stamperia primer first, dried that, and then I've painted them with the Stamperia Super Gold paint. Pretty stunning. So the last thing I'm going to do to them is this is White Pearl Wax. A little bit on the back of my hand, and I'm just going to highlight that mould with the white pearl wax. Have a look. See the difference? Isn't that beautiful? Very easy to get a really stunning effect. Done. These are ready now to stick onto the frame, onto the hoop, with, with the um, hot glue gun. Here's the finished project. So this is my Alice Forever altered hoop. I have attached a piece of ribbon to the top. I've just made a circle of ribbon, placed it around the metal part there of the hoop. I can take that away if I don't want to use it or it'll hold that in place, no problem at all. To display the project, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed seeing that project made and I'll be back again soon with more videos. Thank you. Bye.